Welcome back to Experience Points, a less formal, more laid-back sort of video series where I talk about games that I'm playing but haven't yet finished. And today, we're talking about Tactics Ogre Reborn, a remaster of Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together, a cult classic that has a huge fan base that are extremely excited about this new remade game. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about it right after I tell you about Red Art Games and their physical release of Demon Gaze Extra, a traditional first-person dungeon crawler JRPG where you play as a demon gazer, a bounty hunter who fights against demons with demons of your own as you traverse labyrinths and begin to uncover the truth about your past. Demon Gaze Extra is an enhanced port of the cult favorite Demon Gaze on PlayStation Vita coming to PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. Demon Gaze Extra is about 60 euros, which is just under 60 euros. US dollars right now. And if you pre-order the game today using my link in the description, you not only support me and my show, but you also get some incredible bonuses, including a reversible cover for the game box and an exclusive healing staff and armor gems gift set. Red Art Games is a small company passionate about publishing high-quality physical releases for fans and collectors. Go pre-order Demon Gaze Extra today and consider bundling other games coming soon like Aoden Chronicle Rising to save on shipping and sweeten the deal. Demon Gaze Extra releases physically on January 13th, Thank you, Red Art Games, for sponsoring this portion of today's video. So Tactics Ogre is a game that really picks up pretty quickly from the get-go, honestly. It's very short between when you start the game, you see a little cutscene, and then within about five minutes, you're doing some stuff that's in the battle system. It doesn't really pick up for maybe another 20 minutes total, but it's actually really quick, all things considered, especially by today's standards. So what happens is you actually start the game as a teenage young man and his best friend and his sister, who are all just kind of living in this little town that was previously burned down just a, a, like a year prior by Lancelot and some evil knights, some dark knights, something like that happened. And anyways, they heard that Lancelot was coming to town and they decided to spring an ambush on him. And well, it turns out that it wasn't actually Lancelot, and it's in fact, uh, well, it is Lancelot, just a different Lancelot, another, a different roaming knight, and anyways, they decide to team up to save the duke who was scheduled to be executed, and long story short, they ended up succeeding, and the duke starts providing missions to the, to the new young heroes who saved his life, which is pretty incredible. Uh, you know, all things considered, and it just kind of starts really interesting. It's it's a pretty dark game because it definitely references like people being murdered by, you know, knights and brigands and stuff. The battle system is obviously that of a tactics based RPG. So you'll have kind of like a, a grid or almost like a chess board, but with different levels and stuff. And you get to move your characters around on this board and uh, attack other chess pieces. If, if we're going to continue using that simile, essentially, this is a very standard tactics-based RPG. It might look a lot like Final Fantasy Tactics. However, I've been told that they do have a lot of dissimilarities as well. I haven't played very many tactics games, but Tactics Ogre Reborn, I'm really enjoying it so far, and I'm thinking I might need to give this uh, a little bit more of my time, maybe off camera or something, because it is really good. The voice acting in it is really great as well. I know that Bakusan JRPG during Hit Point Express maybe feeling like the, the trailer showed off some overacting, but I was like, yeah, I don't know if that's actually true. Turns out, no, it's not overacted at all. They just picked scenes that were very emotionally charged for the uh, trailer, but they're actually really nicely done all in all. As far as the voice acting goes, everything sounds top notch, like something you would hear in Octopath Traveler. I think they even had some of the same cast. I'm not positive on that one, but I think they probably did. In subsequent talks with Bakusan JRPG, he agrees that the voice acting is actually really good, as well as the rest of the game, by the way, which is so far, I'm about five hours in and I'm really enjoying my time with it so far. And it is one of those kinds of games though, where it is pretty slow moving. It's one of those sorts of things where battles can go on for several dozen minutes at a time, you know, because it's really not just a single one-on-one -on -one fight with one enemy. It's a large scale group of fights that are happening very fluidly because like you'll be attacking one guy over here and then somebody gets a little bit closer and you need to go attack them, but then somebody's trying to flank you on the other side. So it's very reactive. It's very much like a chess game in action, except for the fact that not all of the pieces have like really complicated uh, directions that they can move. 
and things have hit points. You know, it's it's very, very satisfying. And there's a lot of customization that you can do for each of the, the units that you will be able to control as well. Everything from the equipment that they wear, the spells that they have equipped, the different boosts that you can have them pick up in the form of cards on the battlefield. It's very, very deep and complex and it sounds like the story is going to be fantastic I, I got some ideas in the back of my head i feel like some stuff is going to go down here before too long between well you know i'm, I'm not even going to try and spoil it for you at home because i don't even know if it's a spoiler for me or not i just feel like stuff is going to get a lot worse before they continue to get a lot better you know it, it just seems like if it's just easy street from the beginning of the game uh, that wouldn't be a very fun and interesting story, right? Something's got to hit the fan here pretty soon, and I'm feeling like it it's probably not going to take too much longer. I can definitely say, though, as a newcomer to Tactics RPGs, the uh, sort of way that they integrate tutorials into the combat during the beginning is actually really handy. So I feel like this is kind of designed as a almost like an entry-level Tactics RPG this was originally released, I think, on the PlayStation and the Super Nintendo. So this was one of the very first RPGs to ever be released as a Tactics RPG, I, I do believe. Maybe not the first, but one of the first for sure. And as a result, it's, it's a pretty good place to kind of begin. If you're intrigued by things like Triangle Strategy or Fire Emblem or Advance Wars, you know, if you're into those sorts of things, if, if those have caught your attention, it's definitely not a bad way to kind of go back and relive some of the roots of the series. I'm playing on my PlayStation 5, but it also, I think, is also available on Switch. It's not really one of those games that you need to run on a PlayStation 5 for sure. You know, it definitely is a remaster, a really nicely done remaster, but it's still stuck really well to the original aesthetics. The pixel art that they do is, I feel like, a pretty good progression from the old 16-bit style character art. The portraits are beautiful. The text is pretty interesting. I, I feel like the text looks like a it came straight out of like a manga kind of font. I'm not sure why, but it just has that look in my in my mind. But if just the first five hours have been anything to go by, I can easily see myself getting really sucked into this thing. And yeah, there's so much depth and they're still introducing new concepts and stuff each battle at this point. Plus, you can also outside of combat, go and do some additional training. Uh, there's also, I'm, I'm not sure if this is a new feature or not, but like a wheel of time that you can roll back and you can actually replay through various encounters and choose between which outcome. So there is, I believe, permadeath, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's not quite as hardcore as other games. Like, I think you can like die three times and then they're gone forever. I don't know about that for certain. That's just what I've heard. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> And it's a little bit daunting, but at the same time, because it's one of the really like old games, one of the things that actually started the genre and I believe would eventually spin off the tactics, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics series, because it's one of those things, I feel like I kind of owe it to myself to at least dig a little bit deeper and, and see what happens here because it's garnered such a huge cult following, uh, such a huge cult fan base, you know, and I can see why so far. It definitely has captured my imagination. I just feel like between all of the character customization and all of the uh, possible permadeath, like it's not, like I said, not as hardcore as like, you know, Fire Emblem, but I can see myself replaying certain scenarios over and over in order to get the best scenario outcomes. And it seems like the kind of game that could easily just take up so much time if you let it. But anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you are new here, get subscribed because I'm super dark. I make thoughtful and thought provoking videos for gamers who love RPGs, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.